Hello! Welcome to my Little Witch in the Woods companion series, where I'm going to take you through each section of the game and show you how to catalog and collect all the ingredients for that area. In this video, we'll be focusing on the starting area, the Great Forest. Now, the Great Forest is split into four areas. The plains, the plateau, the waterfall, and the depths. Don't worry, I've put timestamps in the description below if there is a specific ingredient you're looking for so you can get to it quickly. Remember to drop a comment if there is anything I've missed, if this video has helped you out, or if there's a helpful trick or tip that you know for the community. And don't forget to like and subscribe. Let's get started. Our first entry is the Squishy Chub, a cute little ball of fluff that hops around like a rabbit. You can collect from it during the day in the Great Forest Plains using your hand tool. There are always two Squishy Chubs per burrow, and once you collect from one, they will both try and make a mad dash for the hole, so be quick. The unique version of the Squishy Chub is literally just smaller than the regular version, maybe a baby. As per the game mechanic, if you have a quill equipped, you can see a golden marker. Don't forget to mark it down so you can get those research points. One of the research points I've seen uh, people have an issue with is luring them away to collect the fur. Squishy chubs are curious creatures. Once they have a question mark above their heads and are hopping closer, take a single step back and wait for them to hop towards you. Keep this up until you see a double exclamation point above their heads, then dash in and collect their fur. Entry number two is the bush bug a floating seed-like creature that can be caught both day and night in all great forest areas. Just look for a moving bush, give it a shake and be ready with your net. The unique variety is blue in color and comes up very rarely. I've only found it once or twice and I'm on my second playthrough. Don't worry though, you'll have more than enough time to record it with your quill before switching back to the net to actually catch it. Entry number three, the pumpkin terrier. These Pokemon looking creatures can be found in the Great Plains during the day and night and can be caught with the hand tool, but they do require a bit of a chase game. Just keep going until you fill the circle and they drop a piece of their fur. And while it can be annoying, don't worry, there is an easier way. Just make sure you have a weed terminator potion on you. Throw it at the creature to reveal their adorable furball underneath and collect the mountain of fur that it drops. Finally, before heading off, don't forget to give the pupper pets. Yes, you can pet the pupper. The unique version of this creature is actually three puppers in a coat. Well, a coat of weeds. Just toss the potion and get double the fur. Unfortunately, you can't pet all three of the doggos, just two of them for whatever reason. But they are still seriously cute. I have gotten distracted by their butterfly chasing animation more than once. Entry number four, the blue moon butterfly. This shining butterfly comes out from 6 p.m. onwards in the plains, plateau, and waterfall areas of the Great Forest. You can catch them using your net by sneaking up to them. When there are two butterflies on a patch, catch one and then stand still till the other one settles back down and then repeat. The unique variety of the Blue Moon butterfly is gold in color and can be caught exactly the same way. Entry number five, the sprout bird. This sparrow-looking bird is quick to run as soon as you get close to it. It can only be harvested with a nutrition potion, at least as far as I know. Get into throwing range and toss the potion. The bird will drop several flowers um, for you and then fly away. The unique version of this bird is a lot bigger, but just as quick to take off. Have your potion ready while you get into range, and it will also drop a couple of extra flowers. Number six, the one-eyed frog. This translucent frog is out and about in the waterfall areas of the Great Forest during the night. You can catch them with a net on the ground, or if they hop away, you have a short window of time to catch them in the water using your hand tool. The unique variety of the frog has two eyes, while the regular one only has one eye, thus the one-eyed frog. Entry number seven, the blue bubble lizard. This adorable bundle of belly rub potential is one of my favorite creatures in the game. You can find them in the waterfall areas of the Great Forest during the day and collect their smile bubbles with the hand tool. Here's the catch. If you try and collect from them while they are standing up, all you're gonna do is put them to sleep. 
you have to wait for them to roll over onto their backs to pet their belly. This will cause them to release bubbles from their mouths. Usually they will release regular small bubbles, but sometimes they will release a single large bubble that is needed for research points. The unique variety is orange in color and works exactly the same way as the regular blue version. Entry number eight, the tinkle spider. These shy little spiders are found dangling from trees during the day in the depths part of the great forest. You're going to need to sneak up to them with a net to nab them. The regular var variety is yellow in color, while the unique variety is red. Number nine, the pom-pom. These birds come out at night in the depths part of the great forest to watch glowing bush bugs. The unique pom-pom has a yellow circle on its butt. They are wary and will take flight if you get too close too quickly. You have to play a game of red light, green light with these ones. Try to get behind them and sneak closer, stopping if they show a question mark or exclamation point. When you get close enough, grab a feather with the hand tool. This will cause both birds to fly away and the bush bug to disappear. There is an easier way though. Drink a twinkle twinkle potion when you're close and they will come to you, but they will get blinded and that will give you ample time to pluck quite a few feathers from both birds before they fly away. Number 10, the witch flower. The most common ingredient and one of the first you'll gather in the game. It's always good to have on hand. This plant is the only ingredient to have the word all in its habitat description. It can be collected during the day or the night with the hand tool. The unique variety of the witch flower has a very subtle additional shaded area. The easiest way I found is just to run around with a quill equipped and you'll notice it when it turns gold. Entry number 11, the silver star bell. This beautiful flower can be seen during the day, but can only be harvested at night. You can either run through it or you can hit it with a net to release the pollen, which then you can collect with the net. The unique variety is collected the same way and is yellow instead of silver. Entry number 12, the maple herb. Another easily accessible plant, it is always good to have a couple of its extracts in storage. The maple herb can be found hanging on ledges in the plateau and waterfall areas of the Great Forest. The unique variety of the maple herb is slightly larger and has yellowish tips. Entry number 13, the splash carrot. While it's supposed to look like a carrot, it looks more like a peach to me. It can be found in the waterfall areas of the Great Forest and can be collected with a hand tool during the day or the night. The unique variety of this plant has an extra bulb growing on its left side. Finally, entry 14, the little mandrake. This wailing baby of a plant can be found in the depths part of the Great Forest and can be collected with a hand tool during the day or the night. But be warned, you will only be able to collect a single plant without the help from a potion. When it's pulled from the soil, the plant will wail, stunning you briefly before you can collect it. If you attempt to collect a second plant while you have a stunned condition, it will cause you to pass out for a bit and then the plant will escape. The best way to collect these plants is to use the earplug potion, which will allow their wailing to fall on deaf ears. Aha! You see what I did there? Because deaf ears, earplug potion. Never mind. Moving swiftly along. You'll be able to collect as many mandrakes as you can reach while the potion is active, so try and do them in sections and groups that are close together. The unique variety of the mandrake is a larger collection of leaves that will reveal twin mandrakes. And there we have it. I really hope this guide has helped you, and please let me know down below if you'd like me to do another part for the Cloud Valley section of Little Witch in the Woods. Don't forget to like and subscribe because I'll definitely be adding more cozy style guides for other cozy games to the channel in the future. If you'd like to watch my live games, check out the Twitch link in the description for my streaming schedule. Happy witching!